In 2003, Kelly Addington and Becca Teeter began their cross-country journey, and since then, their message of sexual assault awareness, prevention, and sexual empowerment has reached over a half a million college students. And they went all the way to the White House to meet with senior officials to help end sexual violence on campus. You know, doing it, hitting it, working it. Welcome to Let's Talk About It, as taught by Rebecca Teeter and Kelly Addington a no holds barred approach to educating students about sexual assault. Kelly and I do not believe that sexual assault and sexual violence is a man against woman issue. That's so important because in so many environments like this, we're made to feel that it's us against them. And Kelly and I want to throw that out right away. Saturday night, we went out to my favorite beach bar. There was an awesome band playing, drinks were flowing, we were dancing in the sand. It was one of those nights that you kind of look back and you just say, man, that was such an awesome time that night. Same nightmare almost every single night for a month. And I thought, I've got to get a hold on this. I, you know, I've got to go to the health center and you know, start getting some counseling to work through this. Maybe I should drop a class or you know, you know, figure something out. And then one morning, I woke up from the most real and frightening nightmare I've ever had still to this day. Something or someone was on top of me. I was completely trapped. I felt like I was paralyzed. Only this time, when I woke up, the dream felt like it was something that was so incredibly real. I could almost touch it. I could almost feel it. One of the reasons that this work is so incredibly important to Becca and I is because we had an experience in college that forever changed our lives. When I was a senior in college, I was raped by someone that I knew. Becca was so good about saying, okay, you get to choose, you get to decide, and, and whatever that is, I support you, I'm here for you. And laying out the options and really talking about things because I was on autopilot. Like she was my voice of reason, she was my strength, you were my strength when I was weak. weak. Sorry. Woo, no, I mean, that's she our song, was, by the way. Not <laughs> she everyone was knows the, that. Uh, I know. Explain what, what the premise is of your organization. Well, um, the reason that we started this and we founded this is I had such a difficult time um, from becoming a victim to the recovery mm. process to becoming a survivor and to be strong enough and confident enough to stand up and speak out. And so we got together and said, how can we make this better for sure. other students so that they know that resources exist and they know what to do if this happens to them and most importantly, how to prevent it. Being sexually empowered has nothing to do with how much sex you choose to have. I promise you some of our most sexually empowered people in the room today are choosing to abstain from sex. What it means is you know who you are, you know what you want, you know your values, and you're willing to rock them in any situation. However, if your friend, your sorority sister, your fraternity brother, your teammate, your dorm mate, whatever the case may be, makes different choices, you can still be there for them. And that is a truly sexually empowered member of this community. What constitutes a woman as being promiscuous? And I'm sure your eyes are better than mine. Prom one, the number of sexual partners. Prom two, attire. Prom three, how they speak about sex or sexual experiences. Prom four, nothing labels are ridiculous. Prom five, other. Interesting, the number of sexual partners. How many would that be? Two, three, one, ten, a hundred. If you had like ten in a year, that's a little too much. But if you stretch it out a little bit. Stretch it out. So ten in a lifetime. Yeah. Okay, now are we talking about the real list or the pretend list? Because I hear we have two. You have what if a you list study that you abroad? share with Does your friends count? and you have your list that you share with your potential partners. <laughs> right? No matter what you identify on the spectrum, whoever you want to see naked or you want to, you know, get down with, that's not your whole person. And if it is, then we need to deepen our character, do some meditation, find some depth within ourselves. But the thing is, we we are we are brothers and sisters and mothers and children and daughters and all that good stuff. And that there's a lot more to people than who they want to have sex with. Amen. Amen. Sing it, sister. I like it. Oh. That was a sermon brought to you by a Jewish girl from Florida. God bless America. <laughs> so how would you react if someone you care about came to you and confided in you that, and told you they were sexually assaulted? How would you react? Upset? Angry? 
Kelly and Becca made a choice to speak out about their personal experience and share their core belief that one sexual assault is too many and one student can make a difference. Their initial goal was to create lasting social change on their campus. Today, after 10 years of starting conversations with students all over the country and working with hundreds of college campuses, they've created a movement. Kelly and Becca still believe that we all have the opportunity to address sexual violence, that one person can make a difference, and together we can shift the culture. 